What is going on guys welcome back to the channel so today what we're going to be talking about as you can read the title is what to monitor on your cob now strictly when it comes to this access port or your access port not necessarily mine it is user's preference whatever you would like to run you can run as you can see on the top left hand corner i got dan <clears throat> now this is a good one to watch you want to keep watching it because if your dam is going down and you got feedback knock and fine knock learn happening at the same time, your car is probably telling you something's going on. So you might want to go get it checked out. So values that may vary per vehicle. Just so happens my 22 WRX here is at a 1.0, which is as far as I'm aware, the VA chassis to the VB, that is a stock value for what it should be. I'm not familiar with all the, all the other chassis and what they should be at or any other car, but for me on my Subaru, this is what I like to monitor right there, and that's what damn should be. So we're getting the intake temp. So this is very easy and simple. You wanna monitor that intake temp. You wanna make sure you're not achieving above ambient temperatures. Um, I like to be s somewhere around either, I always like to keep it in the back of my head. This goes along with coolant temp as well is don't be above 15, no, 20 to 30 degrees ambient temperature. Gotta, gotta monitor those IATs, can't press them enough, cannot hammer them as hard as I do, or reliability as hard as I want to, but those are things you need to be watching out for if you're looking out for the longevity of your car. So, to get into feedback knock on the bottom left hand corner, what that means, it's not always something bad, not always. It could be something just typically normal. Your car's, that feedback knock sensor, all that is, is just a picture, it's like a little microphone sitting in your engine bay, and that's the noise it's picking up. It could be anything. It could be a loose screw. Maybe you hit a leaf or a rock and it got in there, knocked around a little bit. Maybe you lost that 10 millimeter and your car just so happened to tell you, hey bro, it just fell out. It ding and dangled all this way down and it got out, you know what I'm saying? So it's not always bad. These are these things can cause anxiety. I've seen it happen. It can ruin the experience for the driver. I've seen it happen. It happened to me. But as soon as you get over it and realize you don't have to monitor this thing 24/7, but it is nice to have inside your car, just so you can always know if something's going on. Then this is the thing for you. But don't let it ruin your experience, please. Don't. Just even if you can install your tune from your reputable, reputable tuner or whoever it may be if you want to use Cobb off the shelf tune, whatever it may be, install that tune, take it off the car. Just do it, or save your headache. So now, we got the fine knock learn. Simple, easy, what that means. So, feedback knock and fine knock. If you're noticing that you're getting a feedback knock above 1.40 value, as well as a fine knock, and your dam is dropping dramatically, something's going on with your car. Get it checked out, locate the source, and get it fixed. Don't keep, don't keep tuning your car and adding more parts to it be, with your issues that you're already having because it's just going to create more issues. Trust me, my first Subaru, bought it modified. Didn't know the issues, felt like, okay, you know, these are just, this is, I guess this is how a Subaru feels, I guess. Bought it modified, had all these issues. I kept adding on to it. What do you know? Blew the engine, thing's gone. And like I said, you, you, these things can happen, man. Things happen, but they all happen for a reason. So at the top right, we got boost. We already went into coolant temp. I just keep it up there to monitor it because it's nice to monitor you. Like I said, you don't want to be 20 to 30 degrees above ambient temperature. If you're wanting to push them, push the pedal to the floor and get down and dirty and race, because I know we all do it. We all just want to feel the power of a turbo. We all want to feel that torque kick in, push you back and just go with it. Redline it, maybe even launch it. Just if you're doing it, do it safely. But we got our boost up there. <laughs> As well as we do, our Subaru does monitor boost down here in the driver's assembly right here in front of my face where the, sp the speedometer is. But I like to keep it up there because it is a more accurate count for when I'm getting up to those high boost levels. And I just want an accurate number. 
So that's why it's there. So next portion we got is the center button. You press okay, that is gonna start data logging. Data logging is one of those things that if you are looking to get a pro tune, your tuner is gonna get in touch with you. He's gonna tell you what the data log and what to check off on the boxes. So that way, so that way you can get down to the tiniest minute detail of how precise you want your tune. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up. We're gonna go to set up. And then from here, you can change your gauge layout. Whether you wanna run six, four, two, three, one, whatever it may be, you can do it. But to come to this next portion, you go on down here to configure data logging. And then from here is where you can make your selections of what exactly you wanna data log for your tuner. He's gonna reach out to you and he could tell you for whatever reason, please monitor your pure, your purge, purge, chiller. and that's what you're gonna click. You're gonna click okay, and then you're gonna start monitoring it for him. And then you can go on ahead in here, and you can click configure the shift light. So, whenever your car, this is, this is like one of those little flat foot shifting things. You can configure it to where you want your car to push. So for me, the red light is gonna come on at 6,500 RPM because that's what I have it set to. So that's as hard as my car will let me shift is go to 6,500. As you can see, well, you can't really see, but as you know, 6,500 already breaching the red, <coughs> the red line for Subarus. It's already breaching at 6,500. So if that's what you wanna go for, go for it. I just have it set there because that's what it was when I got it for my tour and I'm not gonna mess with it. We're gonna exit all the way back out and you're gonna go into performance. Now from here, very straight simple, you can monitor your zero 60 time and your quarter mile time. Enough said with that, you don't need to go into, into detail with everything right there. That's pretty much what it does for you. You know what it does. You're on the video, man. You got it. Next, we got troubleshooting. So this is one of the things I love about these access ports is if you get a check engine light or for some reason, cruise control is not working, it'll pop up right there, tell you what's going on, and you'll be like, what? Look up the code, get it, find out the issue, fix it. Or take it to your local dealership and let them fix it yourself, especially if you're under warranty. But I'm assuming if you got an access port and, you want, and you're on this video, you already know that this thing's gonna void your warranty regardless of the fact. Right under read codes, we got reset ECU. So essentially what this does, is it's gonna reset the whole learning for the ECU. Clear codes, it's your check engine light, as well as clear your tune after your ECU. It's just that simple. Now, we go back up to the top, and you can use performance tracking to read the status of your OBD2 monitoring for your vehicle. So we go into right here, you can identify your vehicle, click on it, it'll tell you what type of vehicle you are, and then as well as emissions readiness. You click on that, and it's just gonna tell you what is okay, what is checked off for your car. I don't really know much about it, but that's all I can tell you about that portion. So then here, we go on the tuning. We can change the ECU map, restore OTS maps, show my current map, or show custom features. So it's pretty simple. If you want to change your ECU map, just click it. Or you want to restore one of Cobb's off the shelf maps, click that, reflash it on your Subaru, get it done. Now, if you want to show your current map, <laughs> which I do, is I got Drunk Man ACN 91 Octane Stage 1 map. So if I ever wanted to reflash that tune back onto my car itself, I just go in here and I can reflash it or I can go back to, re to restore OTS maps, get my OTS maps back on here and get, get the job done. So <clears throat> now we can go in the show custom features. So launch control is not supported here. Flat foot shifting not supported. Real time version not supported. Logging type is in CAM. So, and obviously I'm not flex fuel support. So that, that you know, that's what that's it. You know what I'm saying? Finally, and lastly, we got uninstall. Please, if you are ditching your Subaru for whatever reason you may have, 
and you have a tune on here and you do not unmarry this access port, it's just gonna cause the next one headaches. Trust me, been there, done that. Just don't be that guy. Uninstall the access port, take it back with you, sell it, married. I promise you, you'll get a lot more money if it's unmarried. Please, uninstall your access port before you sell your vehicle. Or even if you want to uninstall it, so that way you can restore it back to its stock feature and you can take it in the Subaru dealership and not void that warranty, you can go ahead and do so. So now, hopefully, you guys have learned something from this video. Whenever you may be watching it, please, like I said earlier, please, for the love of God, uninstall that access port. Unmarry it before you get rid of the vehicle. Just hook that next owner up. Don't be that guy. Trust me. I've been that guy. But little did I, I didn't know anything. That's why I made this video. To help you guys in what to monitor and what to do. That's all I'm out here to do, man. Share my life with you guys and continue on going. So, please, uninstall that access port. Hook the next guy up. And if you do so happen to be in a situation where you forgot to uninstall the access port and you completely screwed over the next owner of your vehicle, hey man, as long as you got that access port, you can sell it married to the guy. But keep in mind, Cobb will unmarry it for you, but it comes with a price. So if you liked the video today, guys, make sure you like, subscribe, follow for more content. Everything's down in the description. You already know. And like that, see you guys on the next one.